dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Will Puckett. Today is Saturday, June the 22nd. It is 7 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning on this gorgeous Saturday. Well, yesterday we got a break from the rain that we've had so much of. But around midnight last night, it rolled right back in. Let's bring Brandon in this morning, get a better breakdown on what to expect on this Saturday. Brandon, good morning for what, the fifth day this week? That's right. Good morning, Will. We're going to be, you're going to be seeing a lot of us the next couple of days. And again, it's all right. I think, mm -hmm. I think you can handle it. But this morning, we are seeing a break in the action. But as we take a look at the WIMT studio camera, some fog as you head out the door. So be careful of that. Low visibility in a lot of areas this morning. So just be careful. Give yourself some time. There's more showers and storms back off to our west. I'll give you a little better look at that on the state view and some of those are packing a punch so we're going to continue to watch those as they roll toward our area back out toward Louisville, Evansville over toward Paducah and into parts of southern Indiana and Illinois this morning. Flash flood watch was extended early this morning going now until 4 o'clock for the I-75 corridor and Lake Cumberland areas back out to our west and well back into southern and central Kentucky there as well. Visibility as we mentioned rough less than a mile there in Somerset right at a mile in Jackson and Hazard less than two miles in Pikeville. Remember, anything less than five miles is very dense fog. Looking at 60s across the board for temperatures this morning. It's a mild start to the day once again. The out-the-door forecast is going to feature rain chances off and on throughout the day. Temperatures get close to 80, and some of those storms could be on the stronger side, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. Uh, the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will? Well, all righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, it may not be the cure-all to save the ailing coal mining industry, but officials think it will level the playing field. Thursday, the Trump administration finalized its affordable clean energy plan. The ACE rule is narrower than previous Obama administration policy. It regulates the emissions of individual power plants. The replacement rule gives states more leeway in deciding whether to require plants to make limited efficiency upgrades. The Environmental Protection Agency director, Andrew Wheeler, says this policy may not turn the coal industry around, but it will give it a fighting chance. I think at this point it might slow down the number of coal um, plant closures, but I think more importantly it levels the playing field so that if somebody wants to invest in a new coal-fired power plant, they'll be able to. Um, it's not the job of the EPA to pick winners and losers between different fuel sources. We're supposed to have regulations that apply evenly across the board, and that's what this does. The now the question begs, what does this mean for Eastern Kentucky? We went to a local coal mine whose operator says they will benefit from the new ACE rule. JRL Coal in Harlan County has been in operation for about two years. WIMT's Justin Case talked with the JRL Coal official who says the company is growing rapidly and may even have a new mine in the works. A major milestone, 2 million tons of coal in two years produced by this mine in Harlan County. Coal's dependable. And with some of the new technology and all, we feel like it's a lot better source than it used to be. And people are smarter about it. JRL Cole has more than 300 employees and is continuing to grow. John Quintrell is the general manager. He says Cole may not climb back to the top where it ruled the energy sector for so long, but it still plays a major role in the region. But I do believe that it's going to be steady, at least for the near future, because there's just not anything that's reliable to replace it yet. Growth is the outcome of these rollbacks, not just in production at the mine, but in jobs as well. And more jobs feed the local economy. Everything in this town revolves around coal. Uh, without coal, we've got 300 plus families here that wouldn't have work. And a lot of these people were able to come home when we came in. There's a lot of people that are having to leave for the week that are able to come home and stay with their families through the week and get their paycheck right here in the community they live in. Quintrell says there's not just one type of coal. Historically, Eastern Kentucky's got the lowest, uh, well, the highest quality coal with the lowest emissions. Because of that, many of the energy companies in our region go out of their way to sign contracts with JRL Coal. It's literally the cleanest coal there is. Clean and a boost to the local economy. Again, that was just in case reporting. Now, Quintrell did tell us they provide coal to Kentucky, South Carolina, and Florida. They have two mines and will be opening a third mine in Everts in a little more than one month. An aide to Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton is fighting to get her job back. Adrian Southworth served as Hampton's Deputy Chief of Staff and was recently fired by Governor Bevin's Chief of Staff. 
Southworth is appealing to be reinstated and receive back pay and benefits. The governor's chief of staff says he authorized her firing, saying she repeatedly demonstrated poor judgment. A Whitley County woman was murdered yesterday and police say her killer was her own nephew. Police received multiple 911 calls from her home on Betty West Road near Williamsburg. When they arrived, they found 58-year-old Wanda Richardson beaten to death. Now her nephew, 40-year-old Michael Lee Worley, is behind shop bars charged with murder. I, mean, I can say that, that drugs is possibly on the suspect's part. Uh, you know, he, yeah, I mean, he's a known drug offender. Uh, and he did appear to be, uh, I won't say intoxicated, but he did appear to be under the influence of, of the substance. Police say whether any weapons were used to cause Richardson's death remains under investigation. A grand jury indicted a man for a January deadly crash. Wilbur Neese faces murder, first degree assault and DUI charges. On the fourth day of this year, investigators say he drove under the influence and crashed into a car driven by Eugene Turner. Turner's wife Vonda died in the crash. Breath County Sheriff's deputies arrested Neese yesterday morning. A trial date is set for an Eastern Kentucky man charged with murder. Police arrested Jeffrey Taylor last year for Shannon Saylor's murder. They say he killed her and then dumped her body in Clay County. He faces a murder charge among others. Yesterday, a judge set his trial for December 2nd. One man is behind bars in connection with a Perry County stabbing. This is video from Thursday night scene. Investigators say 39 year old Donald Sizemore stabbed another man. They have not told us the victim's name. Sizemore faces first degree assault and tampering with physical evidence charges. He is now in the Kentucky River Jail. Meanwhile, police still need your help finding this man. His name is Nicholas Rucker. One month ago, state troopers say he killed his girlfriend Vicki Connor in the Woodbine community. Connor's family is offering a reward for any information leading to Rucker's arrest. The reward is $10,000. The Pike County Detention Center was placed on lockdown yesterday morning when detention center employees found a suspicious substance in a batch of incoming mail for one of its inmates. WYMT's Buddy Forbes spoke to officials who say the lockdown was a quick response to a possibly dangerous situation. A routine mail inspection at the Pike County Detention Center building was on lockdown. quickly became a scary situation for one of its employees. We had a couple in hazmat suits go in with a device we call a hazmat ID. When an unknown substance, I think there was a couple or maybe one or two envelopes that had a uh, white powder substance in them, was delivered to one of the inmates. They thought it might have been fentanyl at first. Emergency Management Director Doug Tackett said the entire building was locked down and the employee who opened the mail was taken to the hospital. It's pretty quick. Uh, the fire department was here pretty quick and uh, my deputy director was one that had the uh, hazmat ID. He was outside the building. But luckily the situation was not as bad as it seemed. Basically harmless. Because the substances were basically over-the-counter medication. One of them was vitamin C or ascorbic acid as it came up on the, the device and the other one was a uh, stomach medication. And the employee was not harmed. Nerves may be a little shaken but they're okay. Tackett said he is just glad to know the procedures in place were beneficial and would pay off in the event that the situation had been worse. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT, Mountain News. Tackett said the lockdown was in effect for about an hour, adding that local first responders were on the scene helping to secure the area. A trial date is set for a former Eastern Kentucky girls basketball coach. John Walker coached the girls team at South Laurel High School until last fall. A grand jury indicted him on first degree sexual abuse. Prosecutors say he had sexual contact with a 16 year old on or around November 2nd while in a position of authority or special trust. His trial is set for October 7th. A prominent Pike County property owner pleaded guilty to five counts of sex trafficking yesterday. Ernest Ray, seen here, was first indicted in February. From the plea agreement, he admitted to recruiting girls under the age of 18 for sex acts and paid them with alcohol, money and drugs between 2010 and 2016. Each charge carries a recommended sentence of not less than 10 years in prison. Sentencing is scheduled for October 11th.
A Laurel County grand jury indicted a man on sex related charges yesterday. Nearly two years ago, investigators say Christopher Southard sexually abused a teenager. The alleged crime happened in August of 2017. The grand jury indicted Southard on rape, sodomy and sexual abuse charges. A Bell County grand jury indicted two men in a sex crimes case. Both John and Travis Hoskins were arrested in April. State police said two girls under 14 claimed the men sexually abused them. John Hoskins is charged with first degree sodomy and sexual abuse among several other charges. Travis faces a second degree rape charge among others. Both are scheduled to be in court. July 1st, a Kentucky baby is safe after being found in California. Antoine French is now behind bars on a custodial interference charge. He is accused of taking his five week old daughter out of state. Officers found the child in a car seat hidden in a bedroom closet in Riverside, California. French is being held there. He will be extradited back to Kentucky. Well, today marked six years since a central Kentucky woman went missing. Brooklyn Farthing disappeared back in 2013 in Madison County. The 18 year old was last seen at a home on Dillon's Court in Berea. State police say they still consider this an open case and follow up on every tip. There is a $14,000 reward in the case. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, things dried up just in time for the WYMT Food City Golf Classic yesterday. We will tell you who benefits from the annual event. And later in sports, Kentucky is a powerhouse when it comes to the NBA draft. Most lottery picks, most first round picks in the Calipari area. Cal shares his thoughts on the Kentucky Edge. Forecast keeps chances for showers and storms at times to, and at times today, and heavy rain could lead to some localized flooding issues behind the latest in about two minutes.